let me bring you a few interesting positions from round two of the advanced tournament. Uh, here, Adrit played a big blunder. He played knight a5. Can you find out what is white's next move? Kavya played the move. Not very difficult to find. Adrit was just calculating queen takes, king takes. But he did not see rook takes rook. And that's a full rook. After king moves, it's a rook up for Kavya and she went on to win the game. Next, let us see Ayush versus Yathin. Yathin is up by a bishop right now. And uh, here he played a move that he thought was good but turned out to be a bad move. He loses all the advantage and white becomes even better after that move. He played bishop takes pawn. Of course, pawn can't take back because of the pin. But Yatin hadn't considered a response from white. Can you find out white's next move that Ayush played? Queen f3. Attacking the bishop and threatening queen f7. So queen f7 is a huge threat. So basically, you have to defend against that. So Yatin went rook f8 and the queen went down to take the bishop. And now it's basically a pawn up for white. And Yatin had to fight for the draw and the game ended in a draw later. Next, let's see a funny little game. <clears throat> I say funny because the exact tactic happened twice. Now, Black hadn't developed his rook. Sambrit hadn't developed his rook. He played some unnecessary rook moves with his rook still stuck there. And he tried to develop it now, but it's too late. Can you find out why it's way to punish Black? Yeah, rook h8. And after king moves, the other rook comes in and the rook is taken. So instead of that, instead of rook d8, Samrit had to move the king. He had to move the king out of there and develop the rook that way. But yeah, he, he did this and he lost the rook. Now, the exact thing happened towards the end also. Like here, he played rook e3. Anyway, it's winning for white, but it would have been harder for Ruthwick had black not blundered rook e3. So now check. And then again check and when rook blocks, again check and the rook is taken. So the two rooks over per one and Ruthwick went on to win the game. Now, the last position I want to uh, show, show you is this position. A very instructive piece of uh, advice here. Basically, uh, Shangar is up by a pawn. Shangar has pushed his pawns nicely and he has an extra pawn and his rooks are active behind pawns. Here, he played a move that threw away the advantage. The game became a draw after takes. Takes, 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 and now it's just a rook and game with four versus three, with the white king active enough. And uh, Idan was able to hold Shangar to a draw that way. The game ended in a draw, but the move that Shangar should have done here, if he had thought a little bit more, he played the move in like 10, 13 seconds. The move he should have done was pushing the pawn forward, getting a pass pawn, this pawn is also passed for white, but it's not going to be a threat. These pawns connected are going to create problems for, for Idan. So <clears throat> this would have kept the advantage uh, because black gets to push his pawns forward. But instead, he simplified. And while simplifying, it became equal. As in pawn extra, but in a rook and game, it was not enough. And Idan drew the game.